Hey, what's up guys? This is Matthew Boyle from languagecardgames.com where we believe if you can play card games, you can learn languages. Today I have a really special story to share with you that connects to this game, Language Guardians, and I'm going to point out some different ways that you can use these cards, some different ways that you can play the games. Um, I recently went to visit some of my family members and I brought this card game as a gift to one of my nephews who I would say is about maybe seven years old, maybe eight. Um, and what ended up happening was truly amazing. It surprised me. We ended up playing different variations of this game for, I'm not kidding you, about five hours, probably the whole afternoon. Now it was really, really hot outside. It was the summertime in South China. And so we were indoors, but I brought this game as kind of like a gift to show him, and he really latched onto it. And it gave to, it gave to me it gave me and the family members, you know, a new kind of a renewed hope and faith that children really can focus on things for a long time. You know, they're not so addicted to those um, those flashy cartoons and you know, phone apps as we think. If you can show them a creative and special game and you have a little bit of imagination and energy yourself, you, you know, you could spend a lot of time um, teaching them some fantastic words and vocabulary or anything else. They really have the focus to do it. And we started to use these cards. We played, we played it the original way the game is intended to be played in a kind of an Uno style way. And after we did that a few times, we started going back and forth with each other and just making up games and playing playing this uh, language guardians cards differently. So I'm going to roll through a few of those now. Um, and a lot of these, there's there's different difficulty levels, but a lot of them will be more suitable for very young children. It will show you how you can use these cards in a teaching environment or tutoring environment better because there's different levels of difficulty. Okay, so the first thing you're going to have to do is get out some matches of cards. Now the wild cards have no matches, so for any games involving matches you're not going to use those. And just pick out how many matches you want to use from the other cards. And you can do this based on the age of the person you're playing with because if they're really young you don't want too many matches because that will make the games longer and harder. But I think this is about the number of cards I had with with him. It's probably like I don't know five pairs or so. So you take the um, you take the pairs of cards and shuffle them up and one of the first games that's very easy and fun, people seem to like it, young, young and old, is a game that people call concentration or maybe memory. And what you do is you just put these cards out in like a grid type pattern on the table and you, you can take turns with the other players, I would just put them all out, and you let a player flip over two cards. And now I was trying to to teach and tutor this uh, young nephew of mine, so I would ask him to tell me what these are, or maybe you could even ask them to describe it. And then if they match, the person can keep them. If they don't match, they go back, and then it's the next person's turn. And you go until all the um, cards are gone, and whoever has the most, most matches wins. Now, I've been fascinated by playing this game in China, actually, because the people there tend to help each other to find where the matches are. So you can play this game in a collaborative, cooperative way or a competitive way. You don't have to emphasize who is the winner who got more matches. You could just play together and try to remember where cards are. And that's what my young nephew was inclined to do. He wanted to help me find where the matches are and talk about the cards. Okay, so that's one game, Concentration. Another game you can play with these is Go Fish. So again, with the same matches, you don't, you don't have to use all the cards, so you can just keep using the same matches that you've found. And you would deal these cards out, let's say a four to that player, four to this player. And this is exactly what we're, we were doing on that afternoon. Um, oh, and you need a deck of cards. This is exactly what we were doing um, 
in this hot afternoon in South China. So I would have my cards here and I would I'm trying to make matches in this game Go Fish. Go Fish. It's a classic game, probably a lot of you know it. And I would ask him um and I would put these matches down. They're already a match. I would ask him, do you have the weather card? And he would answer yes or no. If yes, he gives it to me, and then I can put down that match. If no, I have to take a card from the deck, and then he can ask me something that I have. Another interesting point to mention is that this young nephew of mine, he's a native Chinese speaker. He doesn't know a lot of English yet. So I was actually using these cards and we were talking about what they are in Chinese. He didn't even really um, pay attention to the English, at least not on a conscious level. But I could use these cards to start to teach him some English words and also start to teach him some Chinese words that he didn't know. So it was really a fantastic little device for us. Okay, so that's the um, Go Fish style game. Now it's time for maybe one of the simplest ones of all. Once he got to know what's on every card and he could tell me what's on every card, the name of everyone, we, we played a little speed game. Like I said, we just tried to keep coming up with any games that we could. And for this one, um, we got, I think we just used all the cards, I'm not sure. But what we would do is we had a deck out and I would turn over a card and the first person to say what it was could take it. It was that simple, but he loved it. It was a little speed game. I would take this card and I would go, are you ready? Boom, flip it over. And he would shout out the name of what it is. And it was fascinating that some card stumped him and he needed a few seconds to recall what it was. So at those moments, I would just let him think and then try to shout it out. And I would pretend, you know, I'm thinking hard too. And it really engaged him to uh, <laughs> remember the names of all these pictures. Um, and you can make it more specific, like this one's called weather, but you could teach a young student lightning, just as one example. That was a new word for my nephew. Now, the, the original uh, way this game is intended to be played is Uno style. So I think I should show that just briefly here. And let's put the wild cards back in. The original way this game is intended to be played, let me shuffle it back here, it'll be a little easier for myself. Um, the original way this game is intended to be played is similar to Uno or Crazy Eights. A lot of people know Uno. What a lot of people don't know is Uno is based on an even more old and ancient game where you basically just match the numbers and suits on the cards and some of the cards have special effects. So, in my mind, Uno is not really a total original game either. All these, you know, so many iterations of games, they are novel. They blend old and new together. So Uno has its own novel concepts, and so does this game, Language Guardians. So we would deal out some of the cards to each player, and, well, they got to be the same number. I'm just not being very careful. This game is for two or more people. Flip over a card, and then you're going to match down same color or same name. And if you can't do that, you can use a wild card. The wild cards can be played on anything, and the wild cards have some special effects, so read them carefully. So I could put down this card because it's the same color. Or I could put down this card because it has the same name. If I didn't have either of those, then I would need to use my wild card. And if I didn't even have wild cards, then I have to draw a card. And the first person to put down all their cards wins. Now there's going to be a little challenge, something you need to say in your target language before you put these cards down. And you can play this game collaboratively or competitively. If you play it collaboratively, you just need some other people at your table who are willing to teach you either their languages or the language that you're studying. Maybe you're playing with a tutor or a teacher or a friend who's really good with that language. They can teach you words before they put down their cards. And if you're com playing competitively, obviously, then come in the challenge rules on the challenge card. So you can challenge other people if you think they're speaking incorrectly and make them draw more cards.
All right, so that's the Uno way to play. Now, as Kevin Pinho mentioned in his recent review video, it's possible to play this. It's possible to play with these cards in a solo fashion, and it's possible to play with these cards in a story type fashion. And I truly believe that. I don't tend to tout all the different ways you could use these cards, but I think with a little imagination, there are a lot of variations. And I'll link out to his video where he talked a little bit more about some variation ideas. He had some fantastic ones. Um, but a simple thing you could do, um, solo style, is pick up these cards and see if you can complete the challenge. And if you can complete it, take it. If you can't, put it back in and just work through what some of these cards are asking you to do. Now, I like asking students to make little stories. So, for example, you could flip over three cards and then you could ask the students maybe arrange them in any order that they want and then you could ask them to tell you a story this would be like the beginning middle and end of the story so maybe they could say a boy was playing with a ball and it got lost in the forest so he ran to the forest he moved to the forest to go find his ball I mean that's just a really simple silly example but then if the person could complete that story, they could take those and then you could put a, f a fresh three cards down. So you can do, you can tell stories about these cards. As Kevin mentioned, the visuals are really nice and they're kind of Asian themed in this set. And there'll be even more options soon because uh, I'm working on Language Guardians 2 right now. And one more thing I wanted to mention, this takes the most imagination uh, of all, and it's much more abstract, but it was practically one of my little nephew's favorites. And what we did was we just put all the cards out on this big circle table that we had. We did different patterns. We did circles sometimes, but sometimes we just did grids. And we got some little markers, I mean little counters to represent us as characters, and a dice. And all we did was roll the dice, and then we would move our person around. And then wherever we landed, we would describe what we landed on and then collect it. It was kind of like, and sometimes we'd have hidden things, like some would be over like this. I guess it helps to be playing with your uncle who's a game designer to come up with these ideas. But we would move to things and flip them over and find out what we found and try to collect things. Um, and it was really exciting for him. We would do things like um, we would hit off the lights when it's nighttime, and at nighttime was the only time you could collect certain things and then flip the lights back on for daytime. So you could make a little board game with these. We put, our, we put the places as houses uh, in different positions, like at different sides of the board, and you would have to work your way through to get to your house. So if this was his house, I would put it near me, and he would move his counter towards me, and mine would be near him, and I had to go that way. Um, yeah, so now, now even more games we played are coming back to me. Um, we did some games where we put, we put kind of a circle on the floor or a target, and then we had to toss these cards into the target, saying what they were. Um, and the, you know this you might have seen a lot of different types of flashcard games that people um, do those kinds of things with um, tossing flashcards or sticking them on the whiteboard somehow um, but anyways I just wanted to show you a few different games that you could play with language guardians uh, and if you're interested to find out more about this game you can hit a link that I'll put in here to the full playlist for it you can go to the Language Guardians 2 videos where I'm still taking suggestions that, that I'm incorporating into the game. If you have word category suggestions, you can um, put those forward. And you can visit languagecardgames.com and check out the shop. Um, I offer free shipping worldwide to any location. Uh, finally, don't forget to like and subscribe so you can find your way back and also so you can support what we do and help other people find what we're doing. And I guess that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you back here next time.